Stranger Things 4, Episode 6. So the episode begins with the leader of the Jocks being interviewed by the police. Uh, Chief Powell is asking him questions. And he's basically giving his turn of events of what happened whenever his other jock friend that was stalked by the attention seeking grandfather clock was murdered at the lake in front of Eddie as well. This further fuels the jock's beliefs that he that Eddie is the leader of a satanic cult group and that he's responsible for this here. He doesn't realise that Eddie has nothing to do with this, he just was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Again. And he thinks that, you know, Eddie was the one responsible for, for his friend uh, floating up into the air and being murdered when really it was Vecna from behind the scenes. At the buyer shootout house, um, one of the agents that was shot managed to survive the wound, however it doesn't appear to be treated and the government who believe that Eleven is evil are, have captured him and are interrogating him. They've put him into this box, left him in it for several hours, took him out of it and they're basically trying to break him mentally to give up Eleven's location because they want to hunt her down and maybe kill her or just arrest her or whatever, I don't know. And the agent basically just says, uh, tries to get the colonel officer uh, not to kill Eleven. This episode focuses a lot more on Dr. Martin Brenner uh, going through all the memories with Eleven. She's inside this like chamber and she's basically reliving all of the memories that she'd had which was at Hawkins Lab before uh, season one, and we're able, we're basically just seeing new scenes that we hadn't seen before. Uh, it's basically expanding and all the, the backstory, and we're getting to know more about Eleven, and it keeps on flashing forward to, or flashing back to the scenes of uh, the kids being killed at the start of the season. And it doesn't really explain how that happened, but it's getting closer. And what's happening is that Dr. Martin Brenner is going through like all these tapes or something of Eleven's memories that he had, all these CCTV footage that they had of uh, the lab at the time, and she's just reliving all of it. And this process is a process that she has to go through in order to regain her powers, learn how to use them again. Nancy, Robin, Steve, Dustin, and Lucas, along with Eddie realize that there's another gate somewhere, one that the best overlooked, never knew about before. And they go to find it, I think, as a way of getting into the upside down and attempting to stop Vecna. And they basically the whole episode is basically them going about the woods, this forest, trying to find it. And they know it's nearby. Hopper, Enzo and the rest of their cellmates are brought to a table filled with food. The other cellmates think it is to give them the energy to help them complete the next labour task. One of them talks about a monster and Hopper describes it to the cellmates. And they're all shocked as to how he knew about it when at that point he really shouldn't. Like none of the other cellmates have seen it but he was able to describe it very accurately. He realises that the food is not to help them for the next task they're about to do. The food is to give them the proteins that the Demogorgon will gain whenever it devours all of them and that pretty much changes uh, the tables. The tables are turned down, not physically, but uh, they all just sit there in silence like, oh fuck, that makes so much sense. Eleven has a conversation with one of the Hawkins lab staff members. He gives her advice on the next tasks, almost like he's grooming it for something, building up a friendship, building up a rapport with her, just telling her, you know, about things that have been going on. But she's also weary and confused as to why he's helping her because most of the staff there from what we can say, don't give a rat's ass about anybody else apart from themselves. The jock manages to come, he manages to convince the residents and parents of Hawkins in front of the police that Eddie is the leader of a satanic cult called the Hellfire Club, which includes Mike Wheeler and Dustin Henderson. And their parents are all at the meeting and they're like looking at each other going, oh shit, what have our kids got themselves into? This couldn't be true. There's no way that they're involved in this here. And it's just not a good look because the rest of the community is there as well. We need to find our kids. It cuts back to Eleven and we're still having more flashbacks of the dead kids at the start. And Eleven does ask him what's that all about? Did she do that there? And she believes that's just a monster who killed them all. And Martin Brenner, I think he does know the answer but he he realises that she has to find the answer herself by going through all the memories in order to help her understand, you know, 
what really happened. You know, it's to get her that one step closer to um, rediscovering her powers and basically helping her, you know, make her strong again so that she'll be able to take back now and end down the horrors of the Upside Down that is being brought to Hawkins. Nancy, Robin, Dustin, Steve and Lucas and Eddie go to Disneyland and they invite Vecna. He comes too dressed as Mickey Mouse. Um, they go on a boat and row through the lake. Steve takes his shirt off, dives in first uh, and finds the secret gate to the Upside Down. Which is kind of a cool entrance and whenever he goes swims down through it um, he, when he goes through the portal he's like back upside down so it's kind of like you know he goes in and he just climbs out of it you know and all of a sudden he's back up you know standing up again you know which is really cool you know I guess that's why it's called the upside down because it physically is upside down I've always wondered what would happen you know if NASA went in the upside down and decided to explore space what would it look like space in the upside down if you went up there in a spaceship what would you see? Would you still see the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, the galaxies? Would you or would you not? You know, it's a different dimension. Maybe there's nothing there. Maybe it physically can't do that. But the universe is expanding into infinity, so it's possible that there is something there. It's kind of scary when you think about it, but it's also intriguing. At this point, uh, after Steve jumps in, the police arrive at the lakes where the kids are. Um, it was Dustin and Max. They stayed. Dustin, Max and Lewis stayed on the grass uh, and watched the older ones go out in the lake because it's probably too dangerous for the two kids, the three kids to go out to and they noticed that the police were coming and in order to distract them and not have them find Nancy, Rob and Steve and Eddie they basically just give themselves up and are like here we know where the killer is, he went that way kind of thing, that's what uh, Max does and uh, the police follow them and then they're brought back to what looks like the Wheeler's house. They're interrogated by the parents and the cops just to find out what they know. The kids are holding themselves back and they're like not giving up to them, they're just bullshitting them. As Steve jumped into the upside down through the lake gate, um, he gets attacked by the demo bats. And the way that the upside down works is that if one demo gorn or one demo bat sees you, they're all connected, uh, they all see you. So Vecna will see you. If uh, Vecna sees you, then the demo gorn and the demo bats will also see you at the same time and they will all head to that right location looking for you. So Steve gets bitten by all these bats and uh, it's unknown if they're going to have an infection on him, he's going to get rabies or whatever kind of you know, interdimensional diseases are there. Like, you know, does this mean that Steve's in trouble? Possibly, most likely, bitten by the upside down. And season one, you know, the scientists said that Joyce and Hopper that the air is toxic. So it's possible that, you know, their Steve is in trouble there and we need to get a hospital immediately and back in those days like in the 80s like is there really much they can do for whatever infection he might have who knows uh, how's he going to explain that yeah I was attacked by uh, demonic bats in another dimension that's what these all are you know I wasn't playing I wasn't getting hickeys from anybody you know it wasn't out of violent orgy or anything like that there um, so the episode there just ends with him being bitten you know, and it's like um, Nancy, Robin, and Eddie. When they see the cops, I think they, they jump into the lake as well, dive down, and on their way to Steve. But the episode just ends, you know, in a cliffhanger. It's like, oh, is Steve going to survive this? Will they make it in time to reach him? Look at the trailer. Yeah, of course he fucking survives that. You know, for now. That's all I have to say about episode six. I like that episode. Uh, it's pretty good, you know. Um, and I, I know, I know that um, the guy that's talking to Eleven is one. It's friggin' obvious. It's right there in your face. It's right there. He's the way he's talking there. And I think he, I, at some point he's gonna be using his powers. He's gonna, he's gonna have to. I'll not be surprised if they do that there. I won't be. Um, another thing that I completely overlooked uh, is that. Uh, Nancy used to go with Steve in season one, then breaks up with him and goes with Jonathan Byers in season two, season three, and then season four, uh, it looks like they've, they've drifted from each other. And um, it seems to be that she might be going back to Steve. She might be. Uh, it was not until the other characters uh, pointed out, I think it was it Robin, and say that uh, 
they they are um they're going back to one. Of the, it's like you get she's basically saying she has eyes for you, and he she thinks she's saying that Nancy he's got eyes for you. You know, I, yeah, there could be some old feelings there. You know, it does happen. You know, when you see your ex, yeah. Sometimes when you see your ex, you you have nothing at all. You don't feel anything towards them. And sometimes when you see your ex, you know, you get reminded. You know, and some people never really, really get over their exes. And, you know, they still harbour feelings for them, but they have to accept the fact that, you know, things will never go back to the way they were. But it's interesting the way they're playing this. You know, looking back now in hindsight, it looks like, you know, especially with what Jonathan was saying, he doesn't want to go to the same school as Nancy. He wants to go somewhere else. You know, I think he's changed his mind. And they're, it, it seems to be that they're growing apart, even though they, they both finished each other's sentences and described how much they, they loved each other. But honestly, looking at it, there doesn't seem to be very much love there. Like, she didn't even go down to, you know, the spring ball, whatever you call it, uh, with Mike and all, and that, that's a big red flag, you know. If you haven't seen your boyfriend in what could be months or a year, and you've one chance to go see him, and you don't, you know, and then uh, Jonathan is like, you know, he doesn't seem to give a fuck that she hasn't come down. It's more like, it seems like their relationship has ended. But they just haven't acknowledged it yet. And therefore it's implying Nancy could get back with Steve. Whether that would work out or not, I don't know. They're both two different people now. It's um that that does happen, like whenever relationships end, like even months and years later, you know, even though couples have don't they no longer love each other and they find that they're seeing each other again and the romance can blossom again. And it does, sometimes it leads them getting back together, they get married, have kids, and other times it doesn't. You know, usually whenever couples get back after a breakup, um, they tend to break up maybe a few weeks or a month later because their things just aren't working out. <sighs> and that's life. So it's interesting to see how this goes out. I was shipping, you know, Nancy for Jonathan Byers, you know, right? But, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I wonder why they're gonna why they're doing a U turn. I, th I think we might find out in the final two episodes or so, or in the next episode, what's happening there. Uh, I think their relationship has it's just been strained because of the distance. You know, they don't see each other anymore, and there's just it, their their love has faded from the looks of it. Yeah. But it'd be interesting to see if she got back with Steve and how that would play out. You know. Yeah. I'm not the one writing or producing the show, I'm just following along and watching it and enjoying it. And I hope you guys are too. To the very, maybe two or three people that actually sit and watch my vlogs. <laughs>